know that classic seashell shape we all know? Like the gas station? That's the shell of a scallop. Each ring on a scallop shell represents a year of growth. Scallops can swim, a scallop has 60 eyes, and most importantly for us, scallops also play a part in cuisine. All over the world, scallops are harvested for their lean protein, slightly sweet and moist meat, and healthy nutritional qualities. Today we give scallops our West Coast treatment. On the menu is pan-seared scallops with roasted red pepper sauce and fingerling potato chips. We're shelling out some good eating. I'm Garrett Shack, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. Today we want you coming out of your shell and we have the perfect recipe. Pan seared scallops with roasted red pepper sauce and fingerling potato chips. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing we want to do here is get our peppers roasting. We're going to really deepen the flavor, get that skin peeled off and have these really lovely sweet bell peppers uh, to make a sauce with. So we've got a sheet pan here, perfect for roasting and then three gorgeous bell peppers here. Lovely bright and red in color. We want to give them a little spray, so if you have some pan spray that works really well because you get a nice even coating or you could use some, uh, some uh, olive oil or something like that and just give them a toss. Give them a little spray, there we go, and then we're going to fire them into the oven under a broiler, okay? So 550 degree broiler in the oven. I mean you could do this, uh, you could certainly do this in the barbecue or maybe uh, on, right on the campfire, that would work as well. But when all you have is the broiler, work with what you got, right? Okay, now, we've done some ahead of time, because it does take a little bit, and you gotta constantly be turning them to make sure they get all evenly roasted, and what we're looking for is that really charred color. So you're gonna see these, and they're gonna, have, they're gonna look burnt, but the flesh inside is gonna be beautiful and, and, uh, and supple, okay? So, now, uh, what we've done here is helping us sort of one, continue cooking the peppers just a little bit, but it'll also help release the, uh, the skins off the peppers. So you see I've got some moisture in there. That's because they've been in there sweating. So we're just gonna pull the cling film off here. And then we have these gorgeous peppers. Perfect, now before I peel them, I wanna get another key part of our, uh, of our sauce going, and that's in our pan. We're going to have to do a little bit of chopping here. So we've got some shallots and some garlic that we wanna soften. We don't want a sharp flavor here. Everything in this dish is nice and soft and sweet. We'll add a little bit of punch a bit later in the recipe, but for now, we want to kind of soften out those sharp flavors, especially of the garlic and the shallots. So we've got a pan going, a little olive oil in there. Okay, we'll give it a couple seconds just to heat up while we chop some garlic. Uh, like give it a little snap there, there we go. We don't have to go super fine here, we're not looking for a perfect dice, because we are going to be blending all this up together in just a quick second here. Now I can smell the olive oil starting to uh, warm up, so that's a good sign. Let's get our garlic and our shallots into the pan. Perfect, lovely, lovely. Now we're just gonna soften this a little bit, okay? Give it a little toss. And then let that, turn the heat down to about a medium so they just start to sweat while we peel our, uh, peel our peppers here. So, all three of these guys, we're gonna pull the top off and most of the seeds and so on, or a bit of them anyway, <laughs> are gonna come out. And then we're just gonna start peeling the skin away. See how easily that comes off? Doesn't that look great? And the inside still keeps this vibrant red color. It's gotten quite soft and malleable, which is what we're looking for. If there's still some bits that are sticking because maybe they just didn't get quite the heat or the, uh, the charring you were looking for, you can just grab a little paring knife and give it a scrape. And that'll come away just like that. Lovely. Okay, and then we're just gonna open that up and get the rest of the seeds out. There we go. We have to do the other three as well. Same sort of procedure. Pop the top out of there. Hopefully we get most of the seeds. Oh, almost. Peel away the skins. Now we're keeping a close eye on our garlic and our shallots here. It's smelling fantastic. There's something about that smell of garlic and shallots that are roasting. They're starting to soften on a pan, soften in a pan rather. All right, we're almost there. Pretty quick and easy, definitely. I mean, you could buy them at the store, but you never know what's going into that, into that jar when you buy them, right? So this way we know exactly what we've got. Peppers and a little bit of that oil just on, on there to help the charring process. There we are. And then we can chop a little bit of it up to get it into the blender here while we finish roasting our garlic and our shallots. Into my magic blender here. There we go. If you had a bigger blender, you could definitely do all three. That wouldn't be a worry. 
Looks like my garlic and shallots are just about ready, so I'm gonna go to that pan and give it a quick toss as soon as I get all that in there. Okay. Oh, just that smell is fantastic. Super close. Let's get our lid on this and give it a quick blitz to start sort of pulsing it all together. Over here to our magic machine. See how it's all coming together there nicely? Look at that beautiful color. That's what we're looking for. Awesome. Now, this stage we're gonna add our garlic and our shallots. Okay, they're no longer firm. They've got a slightly sweeter texture for flavor. And in they go. And I'm going to use that olive oil as well, so I'm just gonna pour that right in there. No worries, that's gonna have lots of great flavor. Okay, there we are. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt, or a pinch of sugar, rather, sugar. We wanna sweeten it up just a little bit. All right, and some red wine vinegar. Not too much, just a touch. This is a sweeter sauce, but we need that balance in there, right? Okay, and let's mix it all up. Wonderful, letting the machine do the work for us. You know, that's always nice. Okay, let's give it a little taste here. I mean, the color on that looks spectacular. I can smell it. I can smell a little bit of the vinegar, but I can smell the sweetness of the bell peppers. Hmm. Oh, wow. That's great. It definitely needs a little more sugar. I might have gone a little heavy handed with the red wine vinegar there, so. When you're doing it, taste, go easy. Pinch of salt. Maybe two pinches of salt. There we go. And some cracked black pepper. That'll give it just a bit of heat that we're looking for. And we'll put the lid back on and give it another blitz here. All right, we're almost set. Our sauce is just about ready. Now, this sauce you're gonna make just before this, uh, this dish, right? So you don't have to worry about heating it up again. You can leave it in the container and that'll be just fine until we're ready to start plating this guy. We'll be back a bit later in the show to pull together our pan-seared scallops with roasted pepper sauce and fingerling potato chips. But first, following the break, we're gonna get out of the kitchen. You'll wanna stick around for that. Whew. We're down here on location, another beautiful sunny day, and I want to introduce you to Pauline, my friend over here from the Hungry Rooster Food Truck. Hi, Pauline, how are hi, you? Great, how are you? I'm super excited to be here, but I do have a question for you. Yes. Hungry Rooster, like most people would think that uh, you're gonna be serving chicken, but no, that's not true. What do you have? No, we have pierogies. Hungry Rooster comes from basically me growing up in Poland, and my family had two chicken farms, and the roosters were just in charge. So when I got the idea of starting a truck, I wanted to uh, relate to my family and my roots and where the pierogi came from and it came from my grandma. Awesome. And the roosters were in charge and kind of they're feisty like me. Yeah. And I thought and now it'd we got be a, fun. we got a big yeah. flag and a bright green truck to yeah. prove that you're in charge, right? Yes. Cool. So what are you going to make for us today? I'm going to make our famous pierogi slap down. Uh, it's basically grilled cheese pierogi sandwich. Yeah. Uh, with caramelized onions, crispy bacon, aioli. H cheddar, all in portofino, sourdough, uh, of course two pierogies in there, oh, it's delicious. That sounds phenomenal. Well, I'm ready to be slapped down, so let's all get in right. there and check it let's out. Let's go. <laughs> all right. All right, Paulina, so we're ready for the slap down. We're in your gorgeous food truck here. Okay. We, this all happens on the flat top, is that correct? Sure does. Perfect. And we start with two pieces of sourdough and okay. we just put it on the grill like this. Very nice. We have our aged cheddar, but you know what? Just to make it more special, we'll put a little bit more cheddar for well, you. Well, I never say no to more cheddar cheese, that's for sure. It is going into your belly, right? <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. All right, exactly. so we've got some nice um, cheddar on it. We're going to put a couple of pierogies. All my right. poor mother's been making them all. I was going to say, now you guys make these by hand, right? Uh, we yeah, we make them actually uh, at, in her kitchen in Nanaimo. Oh, no way. Uh, and she has a storefront with uh, all her products, pierogies, as well as some other things. Very like cool. Also. Well, that doesn't get much more local than that, does it? Yeah, she sourced everything locally, so it's really nice. Here's our um, the start of it. And 
Okay. Put that little bit of onions as well, because why not? All sizzling away on the flat top, I love and it. And then we just cover it for a minute, and I'll tell you how the slap thing came about. Yeah, please do. One that's such my, a unique name, right? I know. One of my children wanted pierogies for dinner, and one wanted grilled cheese, and I said, you have to pick. Yeah, yeah. And I said, no, mommy, you have to put two in one. <laughs> and that's how it was born, a Fantastic. slap down. And the name just came because it's funny yeah, and yeah. it goes really well with beer and, you know, beer kind of hey, slaps The, gra the greatest sometimes. things come from our children, don't they? Exactly. Hey, so, just try to please everybody, that's fantastic. Mm, yeah. Aioli, it's a chipotle mayo on our slap down. It makes it a little bit more adult friendly. Yeah, yeah, it gives it a little bit of spice, hey? <laughs> For sure. I love it. And uh, we're putting crispy bacon on, on the bacon. right now. And all goes the onions. Caramelized oh, onions and my mouth is watering already. This pierogi. The sounds and the smells. Oh, look at and that! And we slap it like this, <laughs> and here Very it good. is. We have it. Our the oven, slap down. Our I slap love down. it. This stuff looks so fantastic. Mm -hmm. oh, look at that. The cheese is nicely melted. Look at those pierogies. That looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. How fun is that? Bacon, onions. Car cheese. Cheese, caramelized onions, aioli. Oh, wow. And two of our things. Are you going to be offended if I jump in there and have a big bite no, of it? No, I think you should. Uh, it looks I really fantastic. Think you I don't should. think I can hold back any longer. Okay. Look at that. Oh, the bread is just perfectly crispy. Cheese is nicely melted. Here, here goes Go nothing. for it. Mmm. <laughs> oh, man. Do I pass the test? I am some. A plus. Mm -hmm. All you need is a beer now, which is on the barge. Paulina, I love the way you think. <laughs> awesome. So good. Mm. All right. Thank you so much for You're inviting welcome. me onto your cart. Thank you. And introducing me to this beauty, because uh, I'll tell you about the slap down is one of my new favorites. Perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. back to our kitchen. We're working on pan-seared scallops with roasted red pepper sauce and fingerling potato chips. All right, I've had a chance to tidy up a little bit, got the mess out of the way, and now we can get into the sort of the, the meat and potatoes of this dish. Our meat today, some beautiful local scallops. Anywhere you go, if you can find local scallops, they are so, so amazing to eat. Delicate, creamy flavor and texture. I just love them. Scallops are one of my favorite for sure. Now, uh, the scallops we have here today, there's something that we should take note of. There are, they come with a li little muscle in there called the abductor muscle. And what we need to make sure is to peel that off because it's a little bit crunchy, not really great for eating, so you always want to peel that guy off. See that little one right there? You take that one off, pick up the biggest ones, Peel those off, there we are. Now, Atlantic scallops come in, in massive sizes. Sometimes their shells can be up to nine inches long, if you can imagine that. And then the base scallops, a little bit smaller, probably more like four inches, but uh, all equally delicious and delectable flesh. We have it on this paper towel because we want to absorb some of the moisture that's on these scallops, because that's going to help us get a really nice golden sear when we put them in the pan. But before we get the scallops cooking, because they're like really quick, you don't want to cook them all the way through, it's going to maybe make, take maybe a minute and a half on each side, we want to get into our fingerling potato chips. I've got some fingerling potatoes here, lovely, golden, nice elongated shape, also known as banana fingerling sometimes, and we're going to make potato chips out of these guys. And I want to show you a trick that you can do at home. I've got your simple peeler. You could use uh, you know, a normal peeler. This one here is called a Y or a yolk peeler. And we're just gonna simply peel thin strips off of this potato here. Okay, if it starts getting too wide for the peeler, that's why you saw me flip it around like that. Okay. And this is gonna make really nice, thin, delicate potato chips, which I'm super excited about. I mean, who doesn't like potato chips, right? Let's check our deep fryer over here on the stove. Just gonna set one in and see if it starts to bubble. Yes, yes indeed. We've got bubbles. So, that stage, we can add these to our deep fryer again. I'm probably beating a dead horse here for you folks at home, but be very careful when you're deep frying anything. Do not overcrowd the pan as it will bubble and boil over and make sure that you don't uh, um, fill up your pot too high, okay? So we're gonna put a few of these in here at a time. Probably that one potato in there will be good. We definitely want to sprinkle it around so they don't get stuck together. There we are, and I've got a little perforated spoon here that I can kind of give them a little stir and get them going. Okay, now we're gonna let those 
boil and bubble away. And in the meantime, let's get searing our scallops. Okay, got some canola oil. We want something with a little bit of higher heat. In the pan it goes. We want a fair bit, enough to sort of, you know, coat the, the bottom fairly evenly. And now our scallops, I'm gonna put some fresh cracked pepper on them. There we are. No salt at this point. I'm working really hard here to keep the, uh, to keep the moisture out of them. And if we add salt, it's just gonna draw it out, okay? Just give them a quick pat. And then we're gonna go right into that pan. Very nice. Now this is another one of those things. You definitely don't wanna start flipping and tossing and, 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 uh, and working them around way too much. We wanna let the pan do all the work here. All right, so this is an appetizer portion. I'm gonna do three. I want three on the plate. I'll cook four just because that way we have a nice chef snack and it looks great in the pan. Scallops, when as soon as you put them to the heat, they start releasing this amazing sort of, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like a scallopy flavor, scallopy scent. It's just incredible, I love it. And then I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how we're going to season these, these potato chips. See this right here? We've got some thyme infused salt. Basically, we've taken some fresh thyme and some really great sea salt. We've kind of just ground it all together so that we have this amazing mm, thyme flavored salt. And that's gonna go really nicely on our chips. This just plays into that whole idea is that you don't have to go out and buy a seasoned uh, salt. Make your own, have some fun with it. Rosemary and orange, like put some great flavors in there and have some fun. Let's have a look at our scallops here. We got them on kind of a medium heat because we want to get that nice golden color and, but yet not overcook them because scallops when they're overcooked they become like little rubber balls and we definitely don't want that. So let's, uh, let's have a peek at them here. See if we can get underneath here. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at the color on that guy, right? That's exactly what we're looking for. Looks so amazing. Let's flip the rest of them over here. Beautiful. Mouth is watering already. I can't wait to dig into these guys. Another gorgeous one there. Man, those, those look absolutely great. And again, we draw the moisture out with the paper towel before we put them in the pan. And that makes all the difference in, in, in getting a nice golden brown color on your scallops. Have a look at our Potato chips here, boiling away, bubbling away. We're getting close. Now, what do we need to do now? Start our plate. We'll bring our plate right over here to the center because those scallops are gonna be done any second here. And we need a spoon. We're gonna put a nice dollop of this roasted red pepper sauce right in the middle of our plate here. Okay, we're just gonna push it around like that. Hey you, get to the side of the plates. There we go. All right. Okay, let's look at these scallops here. Give them one more flip over and see how they're looking on the other side now. Oh yeah, nice and golden brown again. Fourth time's a charm, look at that. Perfect, now they're still gonna be a little bit opaque in the center and that's what we want. As long as they're not cold, as long as they're nicely uh, sort of warmed all the way through the center, we're doing really well. You can actually eat scallops raw, but in this case, we don't want to. We want that warmth from the, from the scallop there. All right, let's get them to our plate. One, two, Three, this is just a great appetizer dish. Three gorgeous scallops right there like that. And let's pull our potato chips off here. So there's a couple ways of telling when they're done. Obviously by looking at them, we can see that they're starting to turn golden brown. They don't look like raw potatoes in there anymore, which is perfect. I'll start scooping these guys out. You could use a different type of potato if you want. Yukon gold would work here. That's for sure, Kennebec potatoes maybe. But I really like the look of these fingerlings. Now I should give credit where credit is due, and this dish actually comes from my mother-in-law out in Ontario. She uh, absolutely, absolutely loves making this dish and I had the pleasure of having it at her place one time, so I hope this holds up to her expectations anyway. There we go. Now that thyme salt, our homemade thyme salt, just gonna season it up nicely there. A little bit more. Because what are potato chips without salt? Toss around, you can hear how crispy they are. Now we just take a few of those, the center of our plate, right on top of our scallops, stack them up nicely. And all these flavors, the bell peppers, the potatoes, make it look pretty with a little bit of fresh thyme. And there we have it, pan seared scallops with roasted red pepper sauce and fingerling potato chips. And now for one of the best parts of the show, the beverage pairing. With me today, Stuart from Liquor Planet. How are you, Stuart? Doing well, Gary. Thank yeah, you. Thanks for coming on the show. No problem. Uh, so, I mean, 
I see you brought a Caesar here, because I can tell. I see all the ingredients. I know it's a Caesar, but... It's a pretty uh, classic beverage. Right, exactly. exactly. Yeah, most people know what they are, but yeah. you, uh, you you don't do anything normal, right? So you got to do something a little bit different here. No, I like to keep it a little bit different. So today what I've done is I've prepared a uh, bourbon Caesar. So kind of a classic Caesar with a twist. Yeah. And what that's going to do for us and for the dish is it's going to make it a little bit smokier. It's going to pair really well with that red pepper sauce. Nice, awesome. So what, what are the steps that go in here for someone who hasn't made a Caesar before, I So guess? very simply, you're just going to want to start with the base ingredients. Yep. A little Tabasco for us for a little bit of spice. There we go. Sometimes bartenders hate making Caesars because you'll go, oh, I want it spicy or no spice or extra, what do you it, call it? You call it uh, extra muddy. muddy. So that's yeah, with yeah. a little bit of, many people say it many different ways, but I call it Worcester sauce or Worcestershire <laughs> sauce. <laughs> Nobody can pronounce it, right? No, nope. everyone does it different. Yeah, exactly. So do a little bit of that. We want ours a little muddy to go with our dish. So that'll be perfect. So then we're gonna do our Wild Turkey 81 proof bourbon here to give it that little smoke that's gonna pair so well with the right. red pepper sauce. And so bourbon and whiskey, what can you tell me a little, tell me a little bit about bourbon? What's so, the uh, sort of story behind it? So that? everyone knows whiskey. Right. The chief difference between bourbon and with conventional whiskeys is the burnt barrels they're aged in. Okay. So that's what gives it that little bit of deeper color you see here, yep. as well as that smoky flavor. Yeah. And some caramel notes and all that caramel kind of stuff, Caramel notes, right? spice, yeah, yeah. all those delicious flavors cool. that everyone loves. All right. Then we'll just top it off here with a little Clamato. All right, classic Clamato juice, there we go. Just original, Ooh. so we didn't want too too spicy or too crazy. That's it. Who would have thought? Hey, clams and tomato juice together. Oh, it's a <laughs> it's a classic, right? So now we got the celery in there. Get a little stir, and then let's uh, let, let's let's see how this goes. Now I have to admit, I've had a few different types of Caesars, but never had a bourbon Caesar. So I'm looking forward to trying this. Cheers. Thank you. Wow, that has a real nice sweetness to it. That's really yeah. interesting. Yeah, you notice you notice a little bit of smoke there too. It's yeah. gonna go well here. Well, let's see. You, you were figuring that it was gonna go really well with the roasted uh, pepper sauce here. Yeah, you, I think you you're see right. it there. Yeah, yeah totally. Excellent. The sweetness plays off each other really nicely. And let's see. You're skeptical about the scallops. Let's see how we did here. Mm. Just love scallops. Those are fantastic. You know, I think that actually goes really, really well together. Yeah, exactly. So if I go into uh, if I go into your store, if I go into Liquor Planet, um, what can I expect to find? Like wild turkey. You're gonna find wild turkey as well as plenty of other different varieties of bourbon, thousands of types of different wines, beers, and alcohols. Oh, it and awesome. even conveniently, everything you see here. So you'll be able to find the Tabasco. The sauce here, the Clamato, everything you're gonna need to make the classic season. Right, right, so you're living here on the west coast and that tsunami comes, we're heading to your place, right? Oh yeah, for the apocalypse, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. Perfect, thanks Stuart, thanks very much. No buddy. problem. Thank you. Check out our website where you'll find more information on today's show, and maybe a few surprises. I'm Gary Shack. thanks for watching, and don't forget to savor the flavor. All right, yeah, this is great. I think the pairing worked out pretty well. Oh, it went fantastic, right?